Scott and Helen Nearing were a couple back in the 1900s who they both started out their lives in very traditional ways. Helen at one point started to be a violinist and Scott graduated with a PhD and he was a politician and all this crazy stuff. But they decided to trade their life in the city for a much simpler life. They decided to move to the Northwest where they essentially built the entire farm for themselves and they sold it and they ended up building another one. They taught themselves stonework. They grew their own food. They did all sorts of crazy stuff. They bartered with people. They didn't even create wealth for themselves. Any excess money they had, they would just give it away. Like if they had excess food, instead of selling it for profit, they'd give it to their friends and family. It's pretty incredible what they ended up doing. They ended up being happier, they lived longer, and they were just all around better. It's one of those things where today's life we rely so much on technology, and if we would think more like Scott and Helen, maybe we'd all be better. Maybe we'd be happier, we'd live longer, we wouldn't be so stressed out. I think it's really something you should think about doing yourself. So Scott and Helen Neary, they chose to live in the Northwest. They chose it because for one, it's a beautiful place. There's four seasons, it gets very cold winters, lots of snow, rainy, it gets pretty warm in the summer. And they thought that'd be a healthy way to live. As well as the weather, they chose it because it's a, just a beautiful place. There's a lot of mountains, there's ski resorts everywhere. It's just a very nice place. Their first farm they set up was in Vermont. They chose Vermont because they thought it was as close to the old world as they could get. They didn't want to live in any kind of modern society and they couldn't get a world like they could in like the 1600s, so they chose a place that was closest to it. At one point in their lives, um, a ski resort was coming in and buying up all the land around them. So they ended up selling their farm in Vermont and moving to Maine where they built another one. I think that's pretty impressive. The Nearing said a very big emphasis in their lives on not having anything unnecessary. To meet their basic monetary needs, like you know, paying taxes, buying just the most simple things they needed in life, they grew syrup on their farm. And with that syrup, they would barter it for fruits and vegetables from other companies. They would sell it to meet their very, very, very basic needs. And if they had anything excess, they would give it to their friends and family or just eat it themselves. They had no interest in creating excess wealth for themselves or anything of that nature. If they needed something like say they wanted more furniture. They would take something they had and they would go find somebody with what they wanted and they would trade it. They wouldn't just go out and buy it. They would simply barter away stuff they had for other things. And for example, say they needed some kind of technology, like say they had a big tree and they wanted to cut down the chainsaw. They would not go out and buy a chainsaw like we would today. They would simply go find somebody who they could rent it from or borrow it from and then they'd just give it back. They did not believe in buying technology they didn't need on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just, it is incredible how people in today's society can go back to a way of living that's hundreds of years old. I mean, they didn't even pay somebody to build their house as a building farm. They taught themselves masonry, which I think is just unbelievable. I know I can never do that. In today's world, we see, we're seeing a huge rise in obesity and unhealthy living. But the Nearings were very, very different. They were very healthy people. They lived a very, very long time. I think this is mostly due to their hardworking lifestyles and how they ate. They grew their own food and they grew a lot of syrup, but they would barter it for, you know, vegetables, fruits, and that kind of thing. And their diet consisted of mostly fruits, vegetables, proteins, and a little bit of fat. This kept them very healthy, but on top of that, their hardworking lifestyle helped a lot too. They ran their own farm. They, two people ran a huge farm, so you can imagine how much work that must have been day in and day out. Most people nowadays, when they retire, they start to slow down. They spend a lot of time just kind of sitting around watching TV. But at the age where the nearings would have been doing that, they were running a farm. So once they started to get older, it's almost like their health wasn't deteriorating at all. For example, Scott, he lived to be 100 years old. When he hit 100 years old, he was still in perfect health. He was still tending to his farm, harvesting plants on a daily basis. But he just kind of decided that he lived a full life at that point. So what he did was he almost died like an animal. He cut off food for himself. He stopped eating. He at first just drank juice. After a while, he transitioned to only water. And his wife one day told him, you know, Scott, I understand your decision. I know you've lived a full life. It's okay. You can go now. And he died very, very shortly after that. He was in perfect health before he decided to do this to himself. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Then his wife, Helen, she died at 91 years old. She was in perfect health, but she died in a car crash. 
which, you know, who knows how long she could have lived if she wanted to live longer and that she didn't die in a car crash. She could have lived to be well past her husband even, or maybe she would have done the same thing he did. I guess we'll never know, but I think we can learn a lot from how they lived, and it could help all of our longevity. We can all learn something from the earrings. Today's world is fast-paced, full of pollution. We're all unhealthy in our lifestyles. But if we just take a look at what they did in their lifetimes, we can all really learn from them. We can all slow down. We can all just take much better care of ourselves, live more simply. And it, it's just an overall better way of living. And I think everybody should think about that.